I'm going to use a different sheet. So I'm going to wet the back, as I just showed you. So just taking some water, clean water, slosh it over, <clears throat> all over the back. And you can even wet the board as well if you wanted to. Um, just be careful if you are working over an old painting, like I've just done there, I've picked up paint from the old painting. So I need to wash out the, the brush, make sure I've not got paint on the front. Now, for this particular exercise, this particular one, I'm going to wet about th from about um, a third of the way up, leaving the bottom section dry. So the bottom is going to be dry. And then I'm wetting, kind of coming up the piece of paper. And I'm sort of tipping the board away from me a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Like so. So it's nice and wet about, so this is dry, this is wet, and then that's dry. Okay, so let's get some paint on the go. So I'm going to take some, um, remix that because that's got all solid at the bottom there. So I'm going to take some of the, um, the lunar black colour into the pipette once I can get it onto the onto the thing. So let's take some of this out. So I'm squirting it into the pipette. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to just gently start off on the right hand side. So this is where it's wet. So it's wet there. So I'm starting in the middle. I'm not starting at the edge. I'm starting in the middle. Okay. So I'm going to just gently squeeze and then just let the paint kind of come out all the way across, wiggling its way. If I want more paint, I have to squeeze a bit harder. And then all the way to the other side, oops. Kind of fill up up over here a bit more. Now this isn't dark enough yet, so I will need to darken this up. I'll just take that right out to the side there, there we go. Right, now I'm gonna dip into the, um, the other black that I've got here, the, um, uh, the what do you call it, the um, brush show stuff. But if you haven't got this, you could use ink or you could use um, uh, just straight black watercolor or even gouache, because this one's a blacker black. So that's why I'm using this one, because it's a bit darker. So I'm just coming, scooting across here, just to pause it in where I want it. There we go, put that to one side. I'm just gonna tip that a little bit. Now the only thing if you do use the brush though is it does stain. Um, it will split quite nicely, but it does stain. So um, when it's put down, you can't really move it, move it. So let's just tip that over to the side. So I'm just spraying it with the spray bottle just to get it to move a little bit. So we'll get that to run up. I need some tissue. <clears throat> so I'm just going to soak off any excess. Probably needed a bit more paint actually in the middle there, but never mind. This is why we experiment. Let's just quickly drop a bit more in there while I can. So it's going to run a bit more colour through the middle. Just get it to run. bleed. Oops. Try and catch any excess on the side here. So tipping it away from the bottom so that the paint all runs towards the top of the paper is the idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, um, actually I'll just take the spray bottle again and do it. It's going to give it another little squirt just gently just along that top edge, just to get it moving a little bit more. And then run it away. I can't quite see where your dry bit is. So it's dry here. Yes. This was wet. It was a little bit dry at the top, but it's gradually getting more wet. Okay, so you're starting on the bottom of the wet. Uh, no, I started in the middle of the wet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's the first thing I've done wrong. <laughs> Don't worry, you can always have a little go. That's why we're that's why we're doing it on old paper. Okay, just another little 
squirt along that top edge just to soften it off a bit more. Just to get a few more of those little um, wispy bits coming up. Okay. So we'll just let that lay flat for a second. Now, I'm actually going to wet. It's not ideal that bottom edge, but I'm not going to play with it because if I play with it, it'll just wreck it. So it is what it is now. And that's the only thing with this particular type of painting is, you know, like where this is okay, but this is a bit um, higgledy piggledy. If I start playing with that edge, it'll just, it'll just kill the whole thing. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Right, next is, um, whilst that's doing its thing at the top there, I'm actually going to wet um, some of this bottom section, not the whole thing. So I need to leave a dry patch below the already wet bit and come down a little bit. Okay, so I need to leave a dry sliver for that um, very light, what, well, what looks like the sea or whatever you want to call it in the distance. So let's do that. Taking a clean brush or a cleanish brush. So I'm going to take my, actually it's wet on this left hand side, I can't really do it. <clears throat> Quite know why that got so wet. Probably sprayed it. Might be a bit damp, but we'll see how we get on. I've taken some water. I'm going to run. So this bit of water now is for the land that we're going to kind of suggest um, at the bottom of this this image. So we're kind of coming across, sort of comes up, goes across, and then goes out of the picture somewhere over there. This clean water. Brush is dirty. So I'm just going to wash that away down here, all the way through. Take my rigger. And I'm going to run that, oh, sorry, I'm going to run that along this edge of this water now because I want a crisp edge, but then I want it to, um, to bleed at the bottom so you get those sort of tendrils um, at the bottom of the picture. Now, if you want to get the drier bits, then you have to go up into the dry bit of the paper to give you those very fine dry lines. So like here, for example, I can come up into the dry bit of paper, drag it across, then go back down into the wet again. And that'll give me that, that kind of um, uh, wet dry look. So let's take some water, just water now. And I'm just gonna drop some water into that just to get it moving a bit. all the way across, like so. Just a little bit more water there. And that's it. So I can't play with that much anymore. What I need to do then is dry that off.
Okay, right, I just realized I, I did that whole painting the wrong way around. So I'm gonna have another go. Um, and make a few alterations to the way that I painted it because I've just realized I could do it slightly differently. So I'm gonna do the whole thing again. So obviously you don't have to do the whole thing again. You can keep working as you want to work, but this is just part of the um, part of the process. So I'm going to put that one to one side for a second. So I'm going to take I'm going to clean water left. Oh, some clean water down here. There we go. Wet the back again. And this time I'm going to do it. Um, portrait because I should have done a portrait in the first place and I've picked up some paint already at the top there which I didn't really want never mind Let's get rid of that some down there right now oh well okay so now what I'm going to do is First thing first is I'm going to put a very light wash through the whole of the sky section before I put the dark bit on because I don't know if you can see but in the reference actually there's quite a light wash along the the, um, the horizon line before we get to the dark so I think the way that they've done it is they've put a very light wash then they've done the dark over the top so I'm going to have a go at that now so I'm going to wet in the same fashion my horizon line just a nice straight edge or straight-ish edge. Just picked up purple there, that's not ideal, but never mind. And again, I'm gonna wet it up the paper towards the top, leaving this bottom section dry. So I don't want to um, wet this area. Then I'm gonna take my um, gray or black, I should say. Well, that's a bluey black in the in the reference, but I'm just going to use this black, and I'm diluting it so it's quite a light, quite a light black this this time. And then tipping the board away from me, so it's actually going downhill away from me here, starting from the um, right hand corner where the the sea line is. I'm actually going to bring this colour in and across and work it up the painting a bit all the way across so that I don't get um, too many lines and then I'm just going to let that bleed out so it's very very soft I don't want it too solid I want it incredibly soft <clears throat> I'm just going to add some more water in there just to wash it out a bit let that run to the top wash that out. Unfortunately this piece of paper has had it so that's why I'm seeing uh, these marks down here but just ignore those because that's not intended. It's just where the paper's got a bit of um, grease or something like that in it. So let's just mop that up and now what I'm going to do is lay that flatter again and do the same thing as I did a minute ago which is introduce the the um the blacky color i'm just mixing that up so this is the um daniel smith black this one just give it a bit of a stir so i'm going to soak some of that up into the pipette <clears throat> and then you can see here obviously is where the horizon line is going to come so i'm starting a bit higher up about here for my cloud okay so that's where the um this dark section is going to start so again i'm just going to touch the touch the paper letting the paint kind of come out in a fair quantity just let it bleed moving not too fast but fast enough that it doesn't collect all in one spot A bit darker over this side. 
get a bit more dark there. Bring it out. All the way across, a bit darker up there. Okay, I'm just gonna tip that a little away from me. Not too fast. I don't want a big run of paint going to the top of the painting. Just get rid of some of these splodges. <clears throat> Give it a little bit of angle. Just be a little bit patient at this stage, don't rush it. <clears throat> Just let that run up. Don't be tempted to jump in there with too much water as well. Just let it let it do its thing. It's just got to have time to spread and mix. Otherwise, you'll lose the uh, the effect. Okay, let's lay that a little bit flatter. So now I'm going to do the bottom again, as I did last time. So I used um, clean brush, ideally. <clears throat> so this is ideally our um, horizon line and water through here. So I then need to come a little bit lower and start the island or hill line, whatever you want to call it, bit of land, lower down. So we're coming all the way through. Just keep looking at the paper from the side so you can see where it's wet. Comes across and then right across and then we can just wash that out down the bottom there. Okay. Might try it with a pipette this time. So soak up some of that dark. And then I'm going to come in from this right hand side. Just dropping it into the wet area. Might bring a bit of that land out. All the way to the edge. Okay, leave that for a second. I'm going to give that a quick dry. Just mop up the excess that I've got going on down the bottom here. There we are. Might just leave that, give that a little spray just to even that out a touch. Want to disappear that at the bottom now. Just run that away. Okay. Right, I'm going to dry that one now and then put the birds in. It should be dry enough. 
Right, I'm going to take a I'll try it with a brush first, and I'm going to do this with gouache, I think, because it's a bit thicker. But you can use watercolor, and um, don't put so much water in it because I want these to be a bit more um, solid. The birds, we don't want them to be too soft. Um, I want the paint to break a little bit on me. So let's see how dry that is. So let's try for one here. So to do the birds, what we're aiming for, I don't know if you can see, let me do it on a piece of paper, there we go. So for the birds, what we're looking at is you do, you take your brush, you do the, um, you press, and then you're gonna flick, and then press, and then flick to give you that sort of winged look. I mean, I'm not exactly trying to do them in the way that he's done them. He's done them a bit more accurately, but I'm just gonna kind of make them a little bit more simple. Like so, and maybe you wanna turn the um, the board as well to give you um, them going in different directions, okay? So let's put a few of those on. And don't load the brush too much. You want the brush a little bit drier so that you um, you get a, uh, a little bit less paint come off. So let's try one about here. So we'll touch, flick, touch, flick. There we go, there's one. And then we'll have another one about here. Maybe we'll turn it, have a little one there. Another one up there, going away into the distance, getting smaller as they go away, and then maybe a very small one. Oh, that one got a bit big. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe we'll do an even smaller one there. There we go. Oh, he's don't know what he is. Let's just blot him out a little bit. He went a bit wrong. Never mind. And there we go. Let's have a little go at this one. I had a couple of little tries, as I said before, just to sort of give you an example. Um, so at the top here, it's just straight drawing. So we're just going to use um, a, a brush with very, very diluted paint to give us some of the, um, the drawing marks. Then when we get down to the actual, um, the edge of whatever it is, the cliff or the, you know, the bit where all the runnings come down, we're actually going to put lots and lots of water and we're going to drop some paint in and just let it all run to the bottom. So it will get a bit messy. So you make sure you've got plenty of um, tissue for this one. <sighs> Otherwise you're going to get it all in your lap. Um, I'll warn you now. And um, yeah, let's get going. <clears throat> so I'm going to really wanted to do, then probably you would want to stretch it or do it on a block first to make sure that it stays put and doesn't um, just turn that that way around. And doesn't uh, cockle on you. But actually, wetting the back of the paper is pretty, pretty good. Actually, it does keep it fairly, fairly still. Right. So I'm not going to add any water this time to the to the paper on the front. The front of the paper is going to stay dry for the first part. What I am going to do is mix up a very, very dilute solution of the black. So it's very, very washy, not very much um, paint in there at all. I want it very dilute. So I'm gonna start off up in this top third of the, um, or not even third, probably quarter of the, of the painting paper. And I'm gonna to look to maybe put in my um, spire or church, whatever you wanna call it, sort of um, shape. So it's kind of, coming down. So this is just a little bit of drawing. And that's going to come down to about there and then it kind of comes out at the side. Kicks out the side there a little bit. A few uprights. Comes across. And then this last a few indications of where these I think they're like the the breaks in the field. Um, and then there's a very very distant very washy, so not very much paint at all. Indication of a hill line, it kind of comes down 
around the back of the the church type thing away into the distance plenty of water in it keep it very very light coming all the way across and then it kind of just disappears over this side have a few little lines coming off of that as the um i don't know like the the brick walls or whatever you get on the on the fields and then there's sort of a, a triangle shape in the foreground here or a bit closer to the foreground that i'm going to just put in which i don't know if it's a rooftop or not i'm not entirely sure what it is but i'm not really too bothered about what it is and then we've got some slightly darker shapes over here so i'm going to dip into not neat black but a bit stronger black now so so there's a bit more pigment in the um in the paint in order to darken up a few of these more close objects kind of here and then it sort of comes to the edge of the the cliff line there and then as i said there's this sort of triangular shape sort of goes up there and then comes back down don't even know what it is but we don't care a bit darker again and then we're going to take this line up and just let it wiggle away over there now what i'm going to do is i'm going to load up with a nice bit of black so all of this edge i'm going to put plenty of plenty of black paint in there along this edge so I get a nice strong bead of that black and then more black down here so really nice and strong perhaps a bit darker in there really load it up well okay now I'm going to take my big brush so this is the one with just water in it and I'm actually going to run it now along and you, <laughs> be careful when you do this because you want to leave a few little white spots okay along this edge so don't hit the whole line so you see what happens it just starts to bleed and I'm going to leave a few little gaps here and there so I don't wet it where I want those little gaps so I keep it going all the way across like so and then fairly quickly I'm just going to wet now all of this bottom section keeping it all nice and wet. Continuing to let that paint bleed. Just gonna wash out, wash this edge a bit more so that we actually start to get the paint running quite quickly down the board. And as I said, it's all gonna be coming towards your feet. So you might wanna put some, <laughs> some paper down. Gonna take the pipette load that up with some paint and then I'm going to reload and tip the board towards me some of these areas now so I'm going to load it at the top and just let the paint run 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 all the way down just keep loading those spots up so we're coming across perhaps a bit over here as well a bit in here just really load it up well, let it run down. A bit more on this side. Give that a spray. I'm going to put a bit more colour in there first. Bit more darker black. Now, spray bottle. Before that starts to dry, I'm just going to get that all moving. Try and direct it away from the top section so it doesn't spray the top as well. Get it all moving down nicely. So pretty wet. 
And then if you want to start to wash any of it out, you just need to squirt it a bit more to get those sort of run lines. So we'll wash out a bit of this section. A bit through here. There we go. And then I'm going to mop up some of this moisture I've got at the bottom whilst it's all running quite nicely. <clears throat> Fortunately, I sprayed the spray bottle a bit aggressively up here and it's kind of spattered, but never mind. If you can try and be a bit more careful with it, that'd be good. Okay. Oops. So let's tip that a bit more vertically. <clears throat> Might run a bit more water through some of these areas just to get a bit more action going on. So this is just the pipette with some water now. And I'm going to get some intentional cauliflowering going on. So where I get some watermarks in the paint. I'm just going to split that a little bit. Perhaps we'll wash out a bit through here. Wash out a bit in this middle section. A little bit over here. <clears throat> okay, take some water, uh, some tissue, mop that up. Alrighty. Okay. So the first colour then, hmm. sorry, not colour, the first um, piece of um, paint that I'm going to use will be a very dilute wash of uh, the black, the blacky grey. So by dilute, I mean, you know, really put lots of water in with the black because we're talking about the very, very distant hills here very distant hill line. Um, but just remember, we've wet the paper and we put um, dilute paint on there. So have it a little bit um, slightly darker than you would if you were doing it on dry paper. So here we go then. So my hill line is gonna come through, well, let's get rid of that splotch. So we're gonna come through something like, something like that. Give it a little bit of hilliness. So my board is fairly flat here. It's a little bit of tilt, but not too much. There we go. So we'll bring that down. Tilt it towards me a little bit now. Okay, now I want a, a band now in the middle here before I come to my next hill line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna, lit, I'm gonna wipe out a section of this with my big brush. So I'm just lifting out a little bit of that paint to keep a misty area. So I want a nice misty area in the middle here before my next piece of color comes in. So the next piece of color is gonna be um, the black again, but this time a bit stronger. So more paint in it. So I'm just mixing up a little bit stronger, stronger color. And I'm going to bring, so here's my misty area sort of through the middle. So I'm going to come slightly below that and 
start to bring this next hill line sort of wiggling its way through like so slightly more color again wiggle 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 all the way through there there we go we'll let that run down a bit just going to even that out a touch with a spray bottle now i want one more hill line before i get into the um the trees three hill lines always better than two so let's just put a third one in or a third indication of a bit of land. Just get rid of that big blotch of water there, don't need that. So the next one then is gonna come slightly darker again in and dip down and then across. A bit more color out. I'm just bring some more black into my into my thing. It's I run out of colour, so let's do that again. A bit stronger, coming across all the way to the other side, like so. Okay, so now we've got sort of three zones. So we've got the very very far distance. We've got the middle line, and then we've got a slightly darker foreground area. Just come a bit darker still. Okay, so I need to now let that um, just bleed a little bit. Let's just put a bit more paint in there so it comes down towards me a bit more. I'll lose that line a little bit. <clears throat> just going to give that a little squirt. Okay, wiping off the excess. Now then, so whilst it's still a little bit shiny, still a bit too wet at the moment to put the next piece of colour on, I need to let it settle for the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my next colour and I'm going to need the rigger for this. So for this colour, I'm going to use just straight watercolour and a bit of the um, uh, the brusho. So just using the neutral tint and a bit of brusho. Could just use a neutral tint or black watercolour on its own, but it needs to be dark. That's the most important thing. It needs to be pretty pretty strong. So I'm just looking at from the side just to see how wet the paper is still. Uh, it started to go a little bit matte. So I'm going to give it a go, see how wet this is. So very thick paint now. And I'm going to bring in my first tree line. So let's try one about here. Coming in this way. It's going to be a pretty big tree, this one. So one of those. We'll have another one over here. Might bleed a bit too much, but we'll just see how we get on. Bring that in a bit at the bottom. So I'm holding it fairly flat here. I don't want it to be too steep. Um, now I'm going to bring some of these more uh might be a bit too wet let's just give that a little blast just dried it off a little bit so it's still moist but it's not wet not soaking wet i should say so now let's bring in some of these type trees which are going to come up too high, but high enough. A few of them over this side. OK, 
give it a bit more shape. We'll have another one a bit more spaced out over here, I think. Perhaps slightly smaller. Okay, now I'm going to put a bit of water now in with that mix. It's a bit lighter. Not quite as strong. And then have a few slightly smaller, more distant trees, bushes, whatever you want to call them. One there. One there. A bit more ghostly, ghostly bushes. So coming out of the mist and then up into the lighter piece of paint that we've already got on. Make that a bit darker at the bottom. It's got a bit too dark now, but never mind. We'll have some lighter ones over here, just poking their head up. Perhaps a couple just in this area, little bushes. Another one here. Perhaps one between those two trees. Maybe we'll have some hill line coming down behind that tree there. Clean that brush off. <clears throat> okay, we'll leave those to just sort themselves out. Now I'm going to go into um something a lot darker now so let's use let's try some gouache and see how dark that is so i'm going to re-wet let's see how wet the bottom section is it's a bit dry there now so i'm going to have to put some paint some water back on here hopefully this isn't going to be too probably should spray it actually let's spray it <clears throat> So just put a bit of water back in the bottom section. So it's a bit wetter. Taking my um, dark brush, putting some, um, just some neat, uh, what do you call it, um, gouache onto the brush. And then I'm gonna bring this fairly strong that's dry then let's just re-wet that just want to make sure there's enough moisture on there so it does move a little bit so coming in from this right hand side a bit more paint all the way through stronger take that out and then maybe we'll have a bit I'm not quite sure where there's a gap there but perhaps we'll make a little path or something there maybe even another little hill line there coming down into those trees Let's just tip that towards me a bit. Give it a little spray. Let's spray that a bit. Put the lid on there. Okay, I need to give that a moment just to settle. And then 
the last thing I'm going to do with that is take some some white. Might not show up brilliantly, but just going to put a bit of white on here. Um, <clears throat> and I might even just use a palette knife to flick this on or to put this on. Just see what that's like. Because I want it to be fairly fairly thick and just bleed and do its own thing. That one a bit heavy there, never mind. It's all part of the experimentation. Get some large deposits of white here and there. Perhaps we could even use a little bit of this to indicate the pathway. Okay, that'll do. And there we are. That's my version of um, the what bleach. What did you flick on there, Stuart? Was it water? Uh, what? what, this stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just um, white wa white gouache or white watercolour. Okay, brilliant. That's Thank all you. that. That's all that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I may even just on a couple of those. Shouldn't really because I'm playing now, but just want to see what happens. Put a bit of water in them just to get them to move. Let's just see what happens if they creep down. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wet the, so let me show you. So in the reference, this, this sort of section here is very, very soft. Um, and it kind of always, you know, it kind of comes all the way down, but then it gets a bit of variation in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this shape of that first distant hill line, mountain line, leaving this sort of white area dry. Or try and do that anyway. And then I'm going to drop those first colours into that, okay? To give me the shape, to keep it soft. Otherwise, it's a bit hard to keep that very, very soft. So coming in by about two, by mm, about halfway, I'm going to start to wet the paper. So I'm coming out all the way to the side. So as I said, I'm going to try and leave that sort of triangle or that sliver of paper dry or fairly dry so it sort of comes down it comes up then it comes back not going to be a hundred percent accurate but um it's just to give me uh, a nice wet area to work into so let's just do that put some water through there and i'm going to leave that dry okay taking my mixture of gray we we'll start off up here and remembering I just wet, I need to see where the edge is. I just wet this area. So I'm going to start to drop this paint in now, coming through, all the way through, coming down the edge of the mountain line. And then it sort of turns the corner, comes back up on itself, and then it sort of wiggles down and away. We'll let that go all misty in a minute. And then coming in from this left hand side, I do the same thing. Come in, go up, back down, and then meet up with the bit I've already just done. And again, we'll just slosh that out and make it all misty. So let's do that now. Give that a spray. Just spray that out take my big brush and just wipe up some of that moisture to keep it really soft. Like so. Okay, so that's the first distant hill line done. So now what I can do is while that's sort of just percolating, I'm going to mix up a bit more of a stronger um, mix of colour, so a bit more of the black. 
um, into the into the bowl. Just a bit more of that actually. So let's just put some more of that in there. Okay. Now I can't really put the um, the top part in while that's really really dry. So oh, sorry, while it's really really wet. So what I need to do now, before I do anything else, is try and dry off a little bit of this top section. Right, so what I've done there is I've tried to dry off sort of a band through this middle, but this bottom bit's still wet. So I'm going to very quickly just start to get in my second mountain line, which is going to kind of come down like this. And it's going to come out a little bit there and slosh its way down into the wet area. So as you can see, it's still wet down the bottom here. And then I've got, actually that's that far mountain, but I could shore that up and make it a bit stronger. So we'll make this line a bit stronger there and then I'm gonna wash that out. And then maybe, maybe we may even make that into a river or something. Wash, wash, wash. And then we'll just spray that out. Like so. And then we'll come a bit darker through this section, leaving a lighter patch here for say maybe some mist or um, mountainous, mountainous sort of clouds. So we're coming down and then there's sort of a valley down the bottom here. So we'll just indicate a little bit of that and then we'll just wash that whole thing out making it a bit darker on the right hand side more than the left hand side. So this left hand side, it just evaporates. So it just washes out to nothing. And this right hand side will have paint on it shortly when we come back on top. So let's leave that. <clears throat> Wash this out. And then I'm going to let that dry. So I'll give that a quick blast again. The whole thing this time. Right, so that's now touch dry. So I can actually bring some stronger color now onto this right hand side. So let's just do that and mix up a bit more of the black. So the same um, 
black I was using before, so which is the Daniel Smith black. But you can use like paint gray or whatever colors you were using previously. So I'm now going to re-wet a section um, with a smaller brush. So I'm thinking we've got this cliff sort of edge, which is pretty dark coming down through this area. So I'm going to wet now out of this misty dark area, sort of the edge of that shape. So it sort of comes down, comes up, and then there's a tree somewhere there, then it sort of drops down again kind of comes back over this way. Let's just wet all of that. Some sort of, I don't know if that's like a path or something on top of there, but it will come through. And then there's another bit of cliff that kind of comes down. We'll just wash that out. Okay, so taking my, taking my black and the rigger, So I'm starting up here in this wet area, coming down out of the wet area. And if I want a very straight edge or a crisp edge, I go just outside of where it's moist um, to give me sort of that jaggedy, jaggedy edge. You know, if I want to get that tree in, then I can sort of wiggle up sort of that i don't know whether it's a bonsai tree or whatever it is but it's kind of sticking out of the cliff edge like so and then we can have it coming with a darker brush down and away a bit more color paint i should say much darker. So there's a bit more cliff kind of comes down. I'm not entirely sure what it is, is, but as a shape, it sort of comes like that. Let's just wash that out. So it's not too solid. It's a bit more atmospheric, and then we'll pick it up again over this side. And perhaps there's a bit of cliff sort of here coming down. Sort of comes back on itself. A bit darker in there actually as well. Like so wash a bit of that out. And then it's really dark now. So it gets a nice strong, strong dark in here. Tip it back that way so it doesn't bleed into my pathway too much. Have a little bit of that dark just in here as well. Just angle that down a touch more. Coming across like so. Okay, should have washed that top edge out, but never mind. Just evaporate that edge a bit. <clears throat> and uh, there we go. 
Just let that run a bit more. Trees a bit too dark, I think. Let's just block that off a bit. Just knock the tone down a bit, a tiny bit. Perhaps we'll just knock out a little bit of a lighter, some slightly lighter bits in the rock, just by blotting. That's a bit lighter there. 